Hello everybody, welcome to the old school. This is Rob and today we're going to give you a demonstration of a haircut straight from the old school, our Barber Academy in Rotterdam. My model today here is Boot, who is my daughter's boyfriend and I'm going to do a haircut that's a little different because you know Boot has his own style and I like that so I'm gonna do a little bit of a punky crossover because he has a very recognizable style and I do not want to screw with it I think it's gonna be super fun so follow me inside and I'll show you what we're up to today okay so before you start the haircut make sure you have a plan Right, what I want to do is I want to keep length in the back, but I definitely want to go shorter on the side to get a bit of a square look. So what I did is I took out the fringe and I took out the front panels. I'm going to start by going shorter in the front and then I'm going to connect the top and both the fringe to that shorter panels. Okay, I'm going to start with my first section. which I'm gonna cut quite short. But I'm gonna let those outer lengths slip through my fingers, slide through my fingers while point cutting. So I have a little bit of length to play with. I wanna have this mod kind of look, but with a square feeling. So, same length. Start square and then kind of let it slip and slide through your fingers. See, so we're going from a quite short but strong square angle into those longer length on the sides. Repeating that same process. Next step, I'm gonna clean my outlines a little bit because I wanna have contrast with both the length on the side as well as the longer fringe. So using the tip of my Mizutani Bloody Butcher Edition scissors, Yes? Now, if you look, to the front of the cut, you can already see that it's quite a square shape. Which we want because it's not going to be your standard men's haircut, but you do want it to look a little masculine. Because it's a bit of a crossover. It's a a feminine haircut but on a guy like Wood he can make a bit of a feminine haircut look rock and roll and very very street wise so next step I'm pretty much gonna repeat what I've done on this side on the other side creating balance See, starting with my square shape and then slide while point cutting those lengths. See, that's the way to get this nice flow into those longer lengths. Look for your previous cut base. 
Use that as a guide. Now, just to make clear, I do not exactly know what I'm gonna do with those longer lengths. I just like to leave a little bit of hair to play with. Maybe I'm gonna make them super thin and wispy, you know, just to give that look a little bit extra. I just don't wanna go for your standard square sideburns, yes? So, again, using the tip of my scissors, clean out that hairline in the front. Yes, and then check for balance in the mirror. Check the squareness of your look. Make sure you have an even dampness throughout the haircut. These kind of haircuts you do not want to soak in water, which I usually do when I do my pompadours. But this kind of haircut is really finger speed to the feel. But make sure the hair is wet enough, damp enough to manage. Yeah? I'm gonna move to that square shaped section, that square shaped uh, panel on top. Taking a section within that square panel. Now, again, I want the haircut to look masculine and square. So I'm gonna take a section. I'm gonna look for my previous cut section. Setting in, again, that square shape of the cut. kind of over directing that last section going into that nape area see leaving all that length in the back to play with later okay another section there's probably not going to be a lot of hair coming off because of his last haircut but I definitely want to double check so grab all that hair, see, no hair coming off. Keep checking all your sections till you fully connected that square panel on top. We're gonna move to the other side and repeat that process. See, even dampness. Stay in control of the cut. section connect to the previous cut line
slightly over direct that last one. There we go. Continue connecting at sections of your top square panel till you're fully connected. Okay, I'm gonna move to the top and I'm gonna go quite short in my top layer. So I wanna create a little bit of an 80s punk rock, skateboarding, glam rock. You know, it's a mix of different styles. So what I'm gonna do is here, within that middle square panel, See, I'm projecting the hair a little bit to that nape area. So I'm gonna go from shorter layers to slightly longer in the front because I want that fringe to be able to move around. So up. Yes. Kind of pull those length to the middle. So we're gonna get a bit of a concave in the middle. See, over directing. Cutting the crown shorter, we're gonna have that nice contrast. See, because these angles stay a little longer, we're gonna keep that squareness in the cut. As always, this is just the base of my cut. What I usually do is I set in a very strong shape. Afterwards, I'm gonna use different texturizing techniques to pretty much refine my look but you always want to have a foundation to work with right so I got this last little triangle left which I'm gonna cut pretty much the same as the length on that crown area and then later when the hair is dry I'm gonna use that length to kind of go into the length in that nape area. So taking out my clip, and what you can do is, because again, we're setting in a basic shape, see so I'm kind of dragging that whole triangle to the previous cut length on the cut. I'm bringing all that hair in that triangle panel and I use a slight point cutting technique. I use the point cutting technique because I've got a lot of hair between my fingers. Now, opinions might differ going like, oh, you gotta take smaller sections. I do not really believe in that. I agree, but sometimes, especially when you work with strong shapes, Bringing it all exactly to the right point is actually setting in one basic shape one, the moment it spreads out when you let loose of it again. So, short on that crown area. Shorter on the sides. Yeah, you can already 
kind of see the shape emerge, right? Square, a little bit of an 80s vibe. And now I got all these length that are kind of gonna connect to that mullet area, yeah? Of course, I still got my fringe here. Now, I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do with the fringe, but I kind of want it to be able to move around a little bit. So I want to keep some length there. Okay, so I want to keep length and weight in that fringe area. I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do with it yet because I want to play with it once the hair is dry. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a section through the middle Yes, quite a big section, and I'm gonna take that up. And again, over direct it a little bit, yeah? Weight and length. One, take your second section. Now remember that we have a bit of an undercut in those first panels that I cut, which is exactly what I want. I want the hair to be able to move over the previous cut under. Yeah. Up, over direct, and double check. So the basic shape of the cut is set. There is still a lot of length and there is still a lot that I gotta that I gotta play with, but the basic shape's there, so I'm gonna dry the hair, and while I'm drying the hair, this is pretty much where I see what I wanna change about the haircut. Yeah, I really like that length, I like the fringe, I like that short crown area. It's gonna be kind of a, you know, kind of, a little bit of a Rod Stewart meets Johnny uh, Rotten. You know, it has to look a little uncut. I think it's gonna be really cool. So I'm gonna use a little bit of our grooming tonic before I dry, just to give it a little extra hold. Not too much. If you use too much, the hair is gonna be sticky, which is great if you wanna do flat tops or pompadours, but working with a little bit more length, I don't want to get the hair too sticky. I want to be able to move it around because I still want to do a lot with my cut, yeah? Okay, I'm gonna very loosely dry. I'm gonna set the blow dryer to quite hot, but on the least strong power, yeah? Moving the hair around, taking a good look at what's happening. So here we have my basic shape that I'm gonna work with. That longer fringe that I can move around. That shorter crown area. Yeah, and the shorter sides. It's already given it quite a 80s. I mean, I really, really, really love this look. Now, this is not a haircut that I'd probably do in the barber shop. We don't have a lot of demands for it. I wouldn't even call it a barber shop haircut, but to challenge myself, I mean, I know this guy very, very well. I mean, I see him at least once a week when they come over for, for dinner or, or games, you know? My daughter was very clear, Dad, don't give him one of those scorm haircuts, right? But this is way more of a challenge for me because it's such an outspoken haircut with a personality. And I think it screams rock and roll, right? And it's 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 really made to fit. And these these honestly, these are the kind of haircuts that keep challenging me because I gotta think about them, right? So 
what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to refine the shape of the cut. Yeah, so I'm going to relook for those previous cut panels. And I'm going to use different texturizing techniques to to really make the haircut even more outspoken. Yeah. So we got our short panel right here. I just kind of want to See, cleaning it up a little bit using the tips of my scissors. See, I like the moddy feeling about it. Now, another thing is boot here he doesn't use products it's not his thing he wants to go out and ride a skateboard and it's usually the wind a little bit of sweat and how it dries up that does his haircut but somehow every time I see him I mean it's always my haircut but he wears it in a way I would never style it because you know I overdo it but somehow that weird structure that his hair is given is making the haircut look even better. So I don't want, it, want him, the haircut has to fall in place. But I do want to give him the texture. So a lot of different length that is gonna make his hair do that little weird thing. That's only gonna work for his hair. Yeah, see, so I'm gonna take sections and I'm gonna very loosely point cut. To blend that in. See, I do not want to lose that disconnection with the mullet area because that is what makes the haircut so cool but I don't want to have these big bulks of hair, these big chunks that come out. See, so we got length, texture, right? But going fluently into that shorter, disconnected front area. Remember that little triangle that I cut shorter? Yeah. You can see that there's quite a lot of bulk going on in this area. So between the triangle and the uncut mullet. So what I'm going to do here is lift it up. Using the crown as a pivot. Do deep point cutting. take out that bulk but still have that fluent movement into the back. Yeah, so I take a section. Yeah, see that short hair I'm gonna start with. So what I do is this. Yeah, take that guy and then kind of twist my fingers so the hair jumps into my scissors instead of my scissors moving around that is a very nice trick to texturize but keep control throughout that texturizing
See? Up. Starting length. Twist your fingers. See? And the hair will open up and jump into your comb. Into your scissors. Sorry about that. Remaining bulk. Look for it. Lift it. Spread it. See, and take out bulk and create texture. You want to go in quite deep. And that's how you flatten that mullet area. See? Be careful when you use your slicing techniques when you have just ordered your new Mizutanis, like a brand new car, they need time to get used to. Scissors are so, so personal. They're like a fountain pen, right? They're, gonna sh they're, they're pretty much, after a while, you can actually feel when somebody else used your scissors. They're your scissors and your scissors only. I'm very strict about that, right? Because you wanna know exactly how much pressure you put on there, right? You gotta really feel the flow of the cut. So when I'm slicing, of course, I'm looking at what I'm doing, but even more, I use the tips of my fingers because I feel exactly how much hair I'm taking off. Yeah? So check, texture, movement, Yes, I like this length, but because of the slicing and the point cutting techniques, we got shorter hairs under there that make the hair help move around. And again, Butu here is not somebody that uses product or spends an hour in front of the mirror. He wants to go out skateboarding. Well, he does want his hair to look good after skateboarding, and that is exactly what this texturizing is doing. Yeah, so I'm gonna continue those techniques to balance out my haircut. This might look brutal, but if you are following the shape and the lines of the hair, I'm very precise. See, this area is pretty much done. Yeah? So use your most important tools, body and eyes. I cannot say it enough. A good haircut depends on knowing what you're doing. And most of all, knowing your body position compared to the haircut. Yeah? So look for bulk, look for shape. See, this is still quite full. So you want to take out hair, but you want to do it as controlled as possible. See, slicing on the surface of the hair, looking for balance. to the other side, repeating that process in that front area. After you dried the hair and you want to use clips, make sure that you do not, see, put them on there very loosely so you are not going to affect the structure of the hair. Yeah, what I like because the hair is so texturized, are these little details, like here in the front, and this is pretty much the only straight line that I'm gonna do. Because by cleaning up, the 
little area in the front, the temple area, you can really see and accentuate that disconnection with the front, almost like a Mohican, because that's what it is, right? Right there, you've got all that disconnection. So it's gonna move around. I really, really like that. See, I really, really like how that squareness of the front combined with that bit of texture in the back is giving this super, well, you know, I said it before, Rod Stewart almost, yeah? Now, again, I don't think Wood will wear it like this because you know I get all hairdressery on him, but I do like the chip, and I know what it's gonna look like when you just kind of wear it a little dirty and sweaty, and you know, and that is exactly what I want. Now I'm gonna refine the top a little bit more too, so taking sections on that top area. See, because this is quite a blunt, strong line going in there. Point cutting, bringing this all up. On the top. Yeah, at this point, it's really using your eyes and using your personal taste, I guess, you know, because some of you might go like, oh, I would. I would have gone shorter. I would have left it longer. And that's all good. Because you know, at a certain point, yeah, it's not just a class. It's gonna turn into your haircut. So you should do what you think is gonna look best. As long as you always keep in mind what kind of client you got in your chair. So, I'm definitely taking out weight, but not too much. I like that heavy fringe. So, I wanna have contrast with that heavy fringe, see? So, when we're getting to the end of the cut, you kinda wanna move the hair around, looking at what you like about it, and then just refine little parts of it you know, creating a little bit more texture, separating the hair. But at this point, I'm really looking and using the mirror as a tool. See, you want it to be, you really kind of want to use your scissor as a brush. Texturizing the hair, you see that? contrast with those shorter sides it really makes this front part super interesting to cut to move around that is your that is your mohawk that is where all your length is yeah so the moment you're happy with your shape, with your overall look, use again your hands, your fingers spits in the feel. Yeah? Move it around and check for bulk and texture. Yes, my trick is usually when I can bring the hair to whatever place I like and it's still nicely balanced out. That is pretty much when you know you're done. There you go. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna style the haircut 
We're gonna take a couple of photos so we can show you what you can do with a haircut like this. Yeah? So I'm gonna use a little bit, I don't wanna overdo it, so I'm gonna use a little bit of our texture powder just to give it a little bit more movement. I wanna be able to move it around once we're outside to take our photos. There you go, matte powder. What I really like about this product is that it comes closest to what my client would do with his own hair because it kind of makes the hair a little dirty. Yeah, this is what you want it to look like when it dries up. See, there you go, a lot of movement, a lot of texture, short areas, longer areas, all brought together, creating a bit of a, creating a bit of a Rod Stewart mod street. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the little class. We're gonna go outside and show you a couple of different ways how to wear your hair like this. Thank you very much. So, whenever I do a haircut, I always look at the personality of the client. I find that the most important thing. However, when you're doing a photo shoot, when you want to promote your business, when you want to build your brand, when you want to create different looks, it's always a nice thing to show people, your clients, your patrons, that there are different possibilities in a haircut. Like the classics that we do, we love to use product, but we always cut until the cut does not need that product. Yeah? The haircut that I did before, well, the styling that I did before, that is exactly the way my client would wear his hair. Now, because we are shooting, I'm gonna show you a different way you could wear my haircut, yeah? So wetting it down, what I wanna do is, I kind of want to go for a bit of a rockabilly look, yeah? Of course, that is our Scorum traditional. And it's not how Woot would wear his hair, but I do know, I'm pretty sure he's gonna rock it. So I just want to create this other look. I think it's gonna be super fun. So, not even taking out that little bit of uh, a texture powder that was in there, just wetting the hair, combing it into the shape. I wanna have, I'm gonna blow dry it quite firmly into the shape. I only need a photo, you gotta remember this. Shooting for a photo is different than doing a haircut that somebody has to walk the streets with. I only need that one good shot. So here we go. Yeah. When you're doing photo shoots, make sure, especially if you're not sure if it's going to be your final styling, to use a water soluble product. The moment you start using an oil based product like the pink or the green, that is pretty much the last haircut you're going to do that day because it is harder to wash out.
these products, or pretty much any product actually, start with a comb that the teeth are quite white. Because see, you want to start by combing it through. So it's nicely divided over the hair. So, completely different look. It's not exactly how I cut it. And I can tell you one thing, he's never gonna wear it. Even when I was putting all the shit in his hair, he was like, oh my God, that's way too much. It doesn't matter though, because I got a good look and I'm gonna get a good photo out of it, right? So, uh, I had my fun with the cut, but of course it got in my mind that, you know, I am showing to the to my potential clients what a good haircut can do and that's what it's all about so let's go outside and shoot a nice rockabilly look